Lee, thank you for joining us on I Follow Ipswich. It'd be nice to start with um, an encouraging performance from the academy the other night and, and someone who has been involved in the academy at the club. You must be very proud of that. Yeah, very pleased, um, as are a number of coaches, I think, that work with the, uh, the young players through their journey. Um, you know, I was fortunate to be sitting in the stands and watching the game uh, with Brian and Adam and Gerard. Um, you know, unfortunately, due to the circumstances, there are a number of other people that have all been involved in that development and, and helping them get to that stage to either to make their debut in the first team or play in the first team that would have liked to have been there. Um, so, yeah, pleasing night, um, as with any uh, young players playing in the first team. But it's now about them building on that now and, um, and trying to find some consistency and, um, you know, raise some um, questions for the manager to, to, to think about with the squad going forward. The dampener on the evening, unfortunately, was... Uh... Paul revealing that Flynn Downs and Stephen Ward will, be, will certainly miss this weekend's trip. Can you give us any more details on their injuries? Yeah, um, obviously disappointing regarding Flynn. Um, you know, from the from the game against Milton Keynes at the weekend, that, that contact injury. So he's gonna he's gonna be out for a while. Um, so we just got to monitor that and make sure that all heals properly, so he's back in uh, and fighting, ready to get his, his place back as quickly as possible. And with Stephen, um, slightly on the precaution side of things, um, with, with his Achilles, so we're just going to monitor that really over the next uh, few days. But yeah, highly unlikely he's going to be involved at the weekend, but hopefully nothing too serious with that one. It's a blow, isn't it? But in these situations, you have to treat them, you have to tread cautiously, don't you? And, and they'll get the, the, t the t TLC that they need. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the medical staff uh, and the fitness and condition staff and generally all staff are working very hard to, to obviously minimise those those injuries. Um, I don't need to go over it again, but we've obviously had a, lo a long layoff of these players not having to do what they normally do and then going into a very condensed period of training. Um, you know, the, the pitches are, are very different and hard. Um, everything's different to what they normally do so the, the the risks of those injuries go up a little bit more um, you know, there's not a lot we can do when it comes to the, the contact injuries during games that's part and parcel of football it's a contact sport um, but we're doing everything we can to, um, to to try and minimize those injuries because the last thing we want is players out injured and that's the same for players they want to be playing every week so um, we're working very hard to, uh, to to make sure we can get those players back quickly and obviously where possible reduce those injuries as well something else that's in the news at the moment no fans allowed in the stadiums, but football is uniting the EFL and the Premier League. How important is that, that it's one body moving in the same direction? Yeah, I think it's important for the game, um, Jacob, because fundamentally, um, you know, we need to, to get supporters back into stadiums. Um, we need to get whatever the norm is going to look like in the short, medium or long term future. We, we need to start to try and, um, you know, get that back to reality as, as quickly as possible when it's safe to do so um, you know but without those things fans coming in and, and, and football you know is going to struggle really for, for the next few months in particular um, I've made no secret of it and, and other people have spoke about it even Marcus um, you know football is going to take a big hit because the the way that the game is going at the moment is very different to what it was 12 months ago um, so yeah we've all got to stick together and try and get through this and I think if we all do get through it we'll all be stronger coming out the other side a more local basis you obviously met with Tom Hunt a local MP how did that go the meeting you know what did you discuss about the, the potential return of fans uh, we met with Tom and, and basically that was you know to look at how you know we can work with governments to, to try and accelerate that process we obviously talked a lot about the test cases with fans coming back into stadiums um, as we were all geared up to, to, to obviously uh, geared up to happen but unfortunately due to the announcements that week that it wasn't possible so we talked about that and obviously the knock-on effect that not having uh, football matches on at the stadium has for local businesses in and around the area. It, you know, it's really important that when we're doing well, obviously the town does well. And, um, you know, for, for example, there's secondary businesses in and around the area that are struggling at the moment and, and we're part of that, you know, to help them. So we were talking about really that's, you know, one of the reasons, again, why it's important to get people back into the stadium. Um, you know, the town in general needs the people in and around to, to get the economics back, back to the way it was beforehand. Is it a difficult situation to be in as a football club? You're not disputing what the government's doing, but in a way you're sort of challenging it, but in a, in a professional manner. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, at the end of the day, it, it's got to be safe. Yeah. You know, it's got to be safe. There's, there's people's lives at risks, and and it's that's the first and that's the first most important thing. Um, but you start to look at some of the other things. You know, you can do um, whether you go into the supermarket, whether you travel on public transport. Yeah. You can even go on a plane. You know, there's, um, you know, I'm going to one of the local games, for example, last night, and there's yeah. lots of people in, in and around it. So, 
it, it's getting that um, consistency across uh, and I understand you know it's very difficult for government they're in a very difficult position with everything that's going on um, but obviously from our point of view and from the club's point of view we've got to look to try and get you know some form of normality back as quickly as possible yeah. Monday also brought along the uh, the sort of the end of the main transfer window if you want to call it that because there's a few different windows and doors aren't there yep. we saw Keane and Bennett's arrive late are the club happy with the, with the business that was done this window um, yeah, so far I think we are. We, we've brought in obviously three permanents and two loans. Um, you know, we've looked to, to add strength in, in what we feel certain areas of the pitch and, and experience as well. Um, so I think the players that we've brought in have, have started off really well. Um, you know, we've got a long season ahead of us. Um, it's important to, that we've got a strong squad that can deal with everything that's going to come up this season, whether that be injuries, coronavirus, you know, or performance. You know, all of those things are going to take their toll on the squad. So um, I think it's important that we, we have that squad that is as competitive as we possibly could, because obviously our objective is to, to get out of the league as quickly as possible. Yeah. Just how difficult was this window in terms of the circumstances that, that the pandemic brought along? Yeah, I think both incomings and outgoings, you know, you, you have to look at it. We're trying to keep hold of our best players. Um, for the benefit of the football club going forward so you know you have to look at that situation and also you know without any revenue coming in it's incredibly difficult that added another layer on top at the moment with this squad uh, and salary cap there's another challenge so they're all challenges Jacob that we've got to uh, adapt for and, and we're no different to any other club so there's no point sitting here moaning about it or anything like that we've got to be very proactive you know our recruitment team are out working very very hard to try and look at where we can add areas of strength uh, with the budget that we have and, 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 and hopefully that gets us in a position where we can be competitive and, and like I said earlier our objective is to try and get out of the league as quickly as possible. And finally Paul's made no secret that there may be youngsters going out on loan beneficial to them getting that first team football. Are we any further in, in that situation do you think? Yeah absolutely it's, it's a really important part of their development you'd have seen that from the other night I think yeah. playing in, in the stadium in the, in the first team um, you know, it, it adds to their development and they step up to that challenge. And, and sometimes, you know, it's difficult because we've got a lot of players here ourselves and that pathway might not be there for them at this moment in time. But if we stand back and look at what we've done with, um, you know, Luke and, and, and uh, Flynn at that stage when they've gone out on loan and they've played well and got some games and then come back, it helps us in the long term. So um, it's definitely something we're looking at, but it's got to be, you know, the right club, believing in the right thing that we're doing. Um, so. You know, our plan is to try and get some of those younger players out. That's that's not an easy process because every club's got their own players they they want to develop themselves. So, um, where possible and where the right opportunities come about, that is something we would look to explore a little bit more.